Welcome Patriots to this episode of Raven's Radar. We are not going to disappoint. I have a feeling we're going to have a massive lake effect today. You're not gonna wanna miss it. If it's in your sights, it's on my radar. We'll be airborne shortly. Welcome Patriots. We have a dynamic episode for you today. I am super excited to invite into our studios, the one, the only, the dynamic, Carrie Lake. Oh my gosh, it is so good to be here. I, I found out I was doing a podcast. This is not just your average podcast, people. This I'm not is, your average Raven. Um, <laughs> she's not average. She's exceptional. And um, this amazing uh, live audience, I didn't expect this. This is amazing. We have a live audience today. So let's, Patriots, let's give it up for Carrie Lake. <laughs> You do things big in Texas, I don't do. You? Texas, we're big, go big or go home or yep. stay here if you're That's already right. from here. So it's going to be. But yes, thank you for joining us. We are fresh off of the front lines for Patriots, aren't we? We are on the front lines. We are on the front I mean, lines. And the we... battle is going and we are all, I mean, did you ever think you'd find yourself in the middle of this um, no. you know, battle to save our country? In the number of things I thought, even growing up with both my parents are military colonels, I, I never thought that this would be my journey and this would be my fight. But you know what? I'm really glad to have been made for a time such as this. I agree. I absolutely agree. I tell this to people a lot because people will come to me and say, the world is spinning out of control. What's going on? And I say, no, you, you got to look at it differently. Thank you, God, for placing us here at this moment. Thank you. That's I mean, right. this is one of those moments that's pivotal, and not just yes. in American history, I think in human history. Yes. And the fact that we've been placed here, God doesn't make mistakes. Correct. And so those moments when you think, I'm not up for this fight, it's, I'm exhausted, go, no, no, no. God doesn't make mistakes. He put us here for a reason. And that's right. We're Because we're, we're getting there, aren't we? God does not call the qualified. He qualifies who he calls. That's and the right. person at the top of the mountain didn't fall there. That's free advice. That's right. But I'm telling you, so we, we get to do this. My bishop tells me, instead of saying I have to do something, say I get to do something. Yes. I get to save my country. That's right. So that's what we're going to do. But yes, so tell people, I know a lot about you, and a lot of us do, because you started in the television. So you were in television right. when you could actually watch the news mm -hmm. and get credible, factual news information. Right. What was that like? You started out, I know that you're born in mm -hmm. Illinois, but your career took off from Illinois to Arizona, correct? Yeah, I, I was raised in Iowa, I, I, right on the Mississippi River. So I was born in a hospital across the river in Illinois, but I pretty much grew up in Iowa. And when I was in college, I decided I wanted to be a journalist. I thought, what a great opportunity to interview people, talk to people, tell their stories. I like to talk to people and I love people in general. So um, I ended up getting a wonderful career in journalism back when it was fair. I mean, I always felt that I was a fair and honest journalist, but during COVID, you know, I'm 30 years into my career, COVID hits and I start realizing, whoa, there's something really dark going on here. This is about dividing people, uh, pushing fear, pushing division, pushing isolation among, upon people, and pushing an agenda that I just wasn't comfortable with. It's, it's kind of like I worked my whole life, youngest of nine, took my nose off the grindstone, looked up and went, what has happened to my, my industry? What has happened to journalism? It's, it's dead. And so I made a very difficult decision during COVID to walk, it was just as COVID was ending, to walk away from my career. And I can't even imagine, but you actually just threw a little bullet in there. One of nine. So you guys were swimming in money. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you, but America means something different to you when you didn't start out with the American dream, correct? Well, I always felt just being born in America, I, I was living the American dream. I really did. We didn't have a lot of money. My dad was a high school teacher. He taught history and government back when they really did teach you history and government. You know? Come on. And um, he was a football coach. So he had, and he got nine kids, eight girls and one boy. Wow. 
Woo. And and so we didn't have that a lot. That was the Hail Mary, right? That was the Hail Mary, <laughs> yes. Uh, I was the youngest, so everyone everyone assumes the la- he was waiting to have a boy in there. The boy was in the middle. I was the youngest. Um, and he to us, we just were one of the great gifts we were given. We didn't have a lot of money, but was a work ethic. Yes. We learned a good, honest, hard working work ethic, right? Where you have to work really hard. And that is the greatest gift you can instill upon your children. To this day, I think I was given, it was like a Powerball v- victory to have that kind of work ethic. So I've always felt like no matter how bad things get, I can work my way to success. And that's what I did in my career. And then when I walked away, I didn't realize that stepping away from my career would be an act of courage that motivated people and that inspired people. Right. And But I covered Arizona for 27 years, so the people of Arizona, they knew me. I mean, we're friends. I'm in their home every day, three hours a day. And I understood the issues of Arizona. I understood the people. And so when I walked away from my career, the people started reaching out to me by the thousands saying, oh my goodness, we're going to miss you. Thank you for having integrity. And would you please run for office? We need somebody who we trust in our governor's office. And at first I thought they must think I'm a glutton for punishment or they think (laughs) I'm crazy. Why would I get out of the you know fake news and this this career that has gotten so corrupt and go into the even more corrupt world of politics but then i realized well maybe this is why uh you know god gave me that courage to walk away from my job because this is what i'm supposed to be doing and now that i look back on it i really do believe that because how hard is it for a regular person to get into politics it's really hard and for me to get in to have the success that we have to have a movement that we have, um, that's pretty amazing. The people came in, they, they came around us. It wasn't about me, it was about us, we the people. And we just had an incredible uh, movement that defied all of the odds, defied logic, and it was about taking our government back. And so I believe that God put me here for a reason to do that. And I, think and I don't think he's done that with too. us. I don't we think he's... all believe that. Oh my goodness, yes. Because until you have the calling, nobody. Kn- I don't. I wonder if anybody really knows in that moment that they're getting ready to make history. I wonder if David knew when he picked up a stone that he was getting ready to make history, literally, right. figuratively, and that's what it is. And I want to show. We're going to illustrate. A lot of you guys know this, but we're going to illustrate. I want to. I want to run a clip about your coming in to this scene. Okay. So what we have to do is swamp them this time. The one thing that that really does prevail, and I heard all of your different speakers talking about what to do. We used to like to hold out on Tuesday till Tuesday and everybody goes in and votes. And then in some cases you go in and vote and the machines are all broken. That's what they do to you. That's what they did to some very special people. You know that. We had a state, a certain state. Everybody was so proud. Republicans like to vote on Tuesday. They went in and the machines, a lot of the machines were broken. So they had to stand on line for 10 hours and more. And actually, many of them never got to vote. Yeah. I know who he was talking about. <laughs> I think I know who he was talking about. But see, for those of us who do, they said the machines were broken. So I'm going to translate in Bidenese. Cheating. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay, exactly. so exactly. that's uh, because I'm one of those, you know, the, the skeptical. I want to vote on the day. I want to put my ballot in. But before I get to that, I just wanted to, to, to build it up for people. But before we get to there, how many of you in the audience knew that Carrie Lake was a janitor? <laughs> I've held, I did. <laughs> I've held many jobs. I've held many. <laughs> but you made a comment about that at CPAC about how rewarding that was. And I'd like you just to briefly yeah. share that because that's huge. You know, when you're a janitor or whatever job you do, I, I enjoy working. Um, and, and growing up in a family, we learned a lot of different tasks. And thank goodness I learned how to clean because I made some good money as a janitor. Uh, what I love about loved about that was that you, you go in and you kind of see the everything's in disarray, dirty, it needs to be cleaned up. And it's so rewarding because through each step that you make, you see improvement. And I just found it to be incredibly rewarding. I took the job because I was working at the time at a restaurant and uh, my boyfriend in college said, oh, I just got really great job opportunity. And there, there's an extra opening. Do you want to take it? You'll make like almost twice as much as you're making now. And I went, uh, yeah, yeah, of course I <laughs> yes, do. Please. I was putting myself through college. Right. Had to get up really early in the morning. I was working at a drug treatment center. So um, it was, you know, there were challenges. I, I thought it was interesting. I was watching people who 
had managed to make decisions in their life that were really self-destructive. And I, I found myself, um, I, I mentioned this in my book too, which I just recently wrote, but I'm, I will be telling you a little bit more about that later. But I t found myself imagining what led them to that point where they were in drug treatment. And I would then imagine them having a successful life after that. So, because you really couldn't have interaction with, with them. It was a patient, you know, that you're not supposed to really interact with. So I would imagine like, what led this person to this moment? And when they get things turned around and kind of cleaned up, um, how will their life progress and get better? And I found myself imagining these individual patients who I really didn't know and imagining a success story for each of them. I think it kind of was my way of praying for them. Yes. Kind of visualizing what their life could look like. And humanizing because these are people that are broken. Yeah. And I know that God uses greatly those who have been wounded very deeply. I believe that. Yeah. So it's, and also in case anybody missed that, she's a professional at cleaning houses. <laughs> We're gonna get into that. So I, I, I don't look at my house now because it's a mess. I, We're I, talking about bigger houses, <laughs> like white, houses oh my you know gosh. that need to be so and we're going to get I am good at cleaning things up and i'm telling you the janitorial side of me the janitor in me really wants to go in and clean up the swamp i mean come swamp on in arizona yes yes that's where we were going with it is is we we're going to be leading up to that we're going to take a quick break we're going to come back with more with carrie lake Welcome, Patriots. We're back. Did I promise you epic? If I didn't, I should have, because it's epic. We have the one and only Carrie Lake with us today. I am fangirling, if you guys can't tell. <laughs> it's awesome. But it's really awesome to give people a front look at what the front line really looks like, because I think if most people knew what we went through, mm -hmm. what the calling is, they wouldn't, they wouldn't want this for anything. Um, well, it's don't, but don't you want to see politics change where yes. real yes. citizens yes. can get involved? Yes. I guess I was naive when I jumped into this. I thought that that's how our founding fathers set it up, that citizens would say, you know what? I want to go and serve the people. Yes. I want to um, represent the people. And unfortunately, politics has become such a swamp. And thank God for President Trump for really exposing that. Yeah. That is hard. It's hard to get in. I was I was fortunate that I had when I stepped into politics, I had 85 percent name ID from working 30 years in uh, 27 years in Arizona covering the news. So I didn't have to go spend tens of millions of dollars getting my name out. Yes. And I had a relationship. I have a relationship with the people. So I was able to do it in a way that was very uh, non conventional, unconventional. I didn't have to hire these D.C. Um, consultants. To swamp come rats. in, swamp rats. Thank you. You said it, and that's a perfect way to describe them. Oh yeah. And but I'll tell you what: when you say no, I'm not going to hire these consultants. Guess what happens? The consultants turn on you. They come hard. They come for you, and they took. You know, here, here, I've done lived a, a exemplary life. I've uh, had an illustrious career. Yes. D tried to treat people well. Always tried to be fair and honest as a journalist. And they said she must be stopped. She must be stopped. And they turned tens of millions of dollars in attack ads on me. Yes. I used to say when I was an, a news anchor, I would be sitting on the set with my co-anchor. And of course, we had to sit through all of the political ads. You know, this is what one of the bad parts about being yes. in the news. You have to sit through and watch all of that. At home, you can just mute it. And we would turn to each other and say, who in their right mind would ever get into politics? And then I found myself in politics. <laughs> exactly. And, and really at the um, receiving end of some of those nasty, nasty attack ads. And it did. I mean, it brought down my, I, I started in politics with almost 
um, perfect favorability. People, they really liked me because yes. I, they knew they could trust me. And then after, I think we ended up with 50 million in attack ads, more yes. than ever spent wow. before. That's how dangerous a fed up mom is yeah. yes. to the political system. They're like, we must stop this woman. Um, you know, my negatives did go up. You know, yes. they call you every name in the book. They call you racist. They call you a Nazi. They call you, you know, all the crazy stuff. White supremacist. I yeah. get that one a lot. And then, and they can just lie about you. I yes. mean, I, I just didn't even watch the ads. It was just painful. And um, I was also too busy to sit home and watch the ads. Thank goodness for that. And you are right. It's because I had the same thing. I ran for Congress in this district. And I'm telling you, I my Pollyanna showed up with my hopes and my dreams. Like, and I'm ready to serve the people. And oh, what a, what my a noble goodness. thing to do, right? Gracious. Yes. Both my parents are retired Air Force colonels. They bled for this country. Yes. We lived in communism. People like Agnes and others who have lived. And we know it's not just them having guns and you not, it's a total loss of freedom and dehumanizing of yeah. you will do this, you will live here, you will not do this, and people aren't ready for that. I feel like we're living in communism right now. We are. Yeah, yeah, we are. I mean, this isn't, we're not, uh, we're, it's a very slippery slope where we're headed. And I feel like when you hit the edge of the cliff, it's, it's not a slight decline, it is like boom. And we're just on the verge of that. It is a rapid descent, isn't it? Right. And so speaking of that, so we're going now, you've come out of your cushy idea and we know that that's to me a hard part to hear people. They can just literally make up anything. I have heard you're a Democrat plant. I've heard all kinds of nonsense and it's like you have no response. You just have to hope that voters and patriots know better than to listen you know, I don't listen to a lot of this mainstream for the same reason I don't drink out of the toilet. <laughs> okay. That is a, that's great. Raven so, has good advice. So I'm telling you, I, I have to, you have to be careful yeah. when I get going because I don't have breaks. So we have to, but so take us now, you've decided to run. So now you've, you've gotten your calling yeah. and you're jumping in to the governor's seat because Arizona is your home. It's your, your love now. And you want to represent the people, mm -hmm. uh, the campaign, we see the attack ads, and a lot of us patriots watched this in real time. We were cheering, come on, yeah. Gary, but we're watching this. And what was it like for you in the campaign? You're out there, you're getting around the voters, they love you, but the establishment's coming on. What was the atmosphere like in the campaign for you? Uh, you mentioned David when you picked up The Rock. You yes. made history. I really did feel it was a David versus Goliath campaign. And we, we slayed the giant, you know, which was great. What was so cool about it, and I'm kind of getting like the little tinglys right now thinking about it, was when I first jumped into it, was immediately seeing the people go, we're excited about this. Yes. And I covered politics for 30 years, you know, as, as my job. And to see people, young people getting excited. We, I announced, and within 24 hours, somebody sent me a picture. There was a roadside, um, I call them roadside rallies, the things we would see with President Trump, where people yes. just are so proud of their country and they're so excited about President Trump because he's actually working for the people that they would go and wave flags on the side of the road. I mean, when did we ever see that before? So one of these roadside rallies, um, there was a young woman, I guess, I'm guessing 18, 20 years old, and she's holding, I haven't even, I haven't been a candidate for 12 hours. Okay. She's holding a homemade sign, Cary Lake for governor. And it was, you know, I, she obviously had to spend time coloring this and putting it together. And I thought, wow, that's kind of special. That's yes. a homemade sign. A young person, not the typical people involved in politics. No offense to them. I love them. I love the people who've been really active for 50 years. But this was a 20-year-old who's really excited. And that was just the tip of the iceberg. We brought in the most amazing um, big tent of of Republicans. Yes. I call them conservatives. I call them America first. They were young people from all walks of life, yes. all different backgrounds, tired of what had been happening to yes. them. Our whole campaign was very much about younger people because the students, think about what we were doing when we were 18 in our 20s. I mean, I didn't want to tell you what I was doing. In yeah, 18. no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, we were having fun and they weren't allowed that because of bad governance, bad That's representation. Right. Our governors locked us down. Our governors forced these kids to wear masks. They forced them into their dorm rooms. They forced yes. them. 
away from interacting with other, you know, young people, having those good moments, those good yes. times. They took away prom. They took away their scholarship opportunities because they shut down um, athletics. It is, as a mother, I, I mean, I can feel my blood pressure going up. Yes. I'm still so angry what they did to our kids. And those kids recognized who did it. And that's why they came in to the fold with us. And so I was excited right away. We would go to a room and they would say, we, we're going to have probably 40 people there. They would call us and they would say, you know, we had to switch to the auditorium. We have 240 yes. people. And this was how it went throughout the entire campaign. If you'd normally get 20, we had 100. If you'd normally get 50, we had 300. People just started coming in because I was speaking their language. That's right. I don't, I'm not a politician. I didn't have consultants telling me what to say. I was speaking from a mother's point of view who loves Arizona, who's lived there for a long time. Our problems are not impossible to solve if we right. have common sense solutions. And that's what I learned from President Trump. He went in, he had very little support. That's right. He went into DC. I mean, that guy has, uh, I'm not supposed to say balls. <laughs> <laughs> that guy has a spine. Are we allowed to He's say got, chutzpah? Chutzpah, no, yeah, there we go. Okay. That's, that's right. <laughs> Rock star. So can you imagine what that took? You know, we, yes. we entered politics later. He crawled so we could run. Correct. He goes into D.C. and he's getting attacked for seven, eight years straight. He's still getting attacked. Yes. The media never does him a favor. They never no. do. They, they attack everything he does. Even now when he gets a friendly interview, Sean Hannity interviewed him. It was still full of yes. trying to make him be on the defensive, asking him questions about stuff that's not even true. He never gets a break in the media. He doesn't. And now he's running up against somebody who has gotten just one break after the next from the media. So he, this new guy comes in smelling sweet, but really um, has not had the Trump treatment. Anybody who can endure what Trump endured, I Correct. want sitting in the White House. Yeah. I want going up against these people who want to bring America down because that man is strong. That's right. And That's we had to want. deal with that. I knew we were onto something. I knew that we had poked the giant when yes. we started getting attacked in the media immediately from day one. Here I worked in the media for 30 years. I never got one break from the media. Uh, there was a study that came out that said 87% of news stories about the people running in, in that last election, if they were Republican, 87% yes. of the news stories were negative. If not higher. And then they said there's one candidate who in our survey had 100% negative coverage. And it was me. 100% negative coverage. That's because when you're an America first candidate, you're dangerous. And they thought they got rid of Trump. And then they went, oh my gosh. We've now got Trump in heels. Come on. We gotta stop him. We gotta stop him. Yes. And they did everything they could. Yes. And his frontline general, because I mean, I am not a Trump fan. I am the Trump friend. Rock star, boss mode. When he turned that plane around and said, you know, Pelosi and her merry band of communists back for another round of alcohol somewhere else. Ah. So, yes, but that's what we need. You know, on the playground, when you're getting picked on, you want that tough kid right. who's going to really straighten things out. And people forget that. But we're going to we're going to get delved now into the the essence. We're going to get the geography of the swamp. We first we've got to take a quick break and we'll be right back with more Carrie Lake. Welcome back, Patriots. We're back here. And are we enjoying our day on the lake? Yeah. Woo. Woo. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't good. resist. <laughs> but this is awesome. So take us through real quick, because this was a heartbreak a lot of us watched in real time. First, let me, let me run the clip. 
of our all of our um, complaints were important, but this one is to me the smoking gun. This is how we get this glut of mail in ballots with phony signatures. It's it's a sham. The whole signature verification procedure. They're not following the procedures, and they're allowing literally tens of thousands over. We we project, projected more than one hundred and forty thousand bogus ballots got rushed through in this signature verification uh, portion of our election. And we have three whistleblowers who came forward attesting to that, talking about what a sham operation it is, how literally scribbles and no signatures at all were being passed through. They were flagging and denying uh, 10 to 15,000 signatures a day. These workers at Maricopa County saying these things don't match at all. And as they moved it up the, uh, you know, up the, the, process somebody was just sending those through anyway and this is this is absolutely huge i believe that when arizona voters and frankly when american citizens see how corrupt and what a joke this process is they may say we don't want mail in ballots there's only one security feature for mail in ballots and that is the signature on the outside of that envelope and if those signatures aren't being matched if the signatures are completely fraudulent and they're being counted that makes my vote watered down and your vote watered down and the good people of Arizona. Even those counties where they are following procedures, when Maricopa County is running these lawless elections like this, those other counties get watered down from their legal vote. That is, I mean, it is, it's really hard to watch that. It is, it is hard to watch that. Tell us, you know, briefly, so you're, you're doing this, you're running and this is what your phone is blowing up with. So, you know. well, we're, we're, our movement was so massive, is so massive that they were freaked out. They tried the 50 million in attack ads. It didn't stop us. I mean, we, wherever, by the end of our campaign, we were drawing thousands of people for rallies. It reminds me a lot of somebody else we know, right? Mm -hmm. Except on an Arizona scale. And they went, oh my gosh, how do we stop this woman? They wrote right about two weeks before the uh, election. Spoiler, you can't. <laughs> so two weeks before the election, there was a, a headline that read, the most dangerous politician in America. I read that. I scrolled down. I thought it was going to be President <laughs> Trump, and it was me, <laughs> a, a middle-aged mom from Arizona. They're so worried about we the people that they said, yes. we've got to stop her by any means necessary. And they realized that election day, when our army of supporters showed up, yes, they said, holy cow. Holy crap, we got to stop her. And they sabotaged Election Day in Arizona. Election Day hit. They knew 75% of the people showing up were voting for me. And immediately at 6 a.m., the machines weren't working. They intentionally printed the wrong image on the ballot only on Election Day. We vote for a month in Arizona, by so the way. So it would be rejected. Yeah. The image would make the ballot be rejected. And the ones in trip, typically, because they know that Republicans wait to day of, to vote. So the ones that were in those districts yeah. were failing all over the place. 60% of our polling locations were inoperable, not working. The machines didn't work. They were printing the wrong ballots. And guess where those 60% pretty much lied? It was in Republican areas. So this was uh, an, an intentional sabotage of Election Day. That's the only way they could stop it. And it's really, um, it it's, is. it's disgusting. And they thought that I would walk away, crawl away, and disappear into the good night. And no, 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 they mess with the wrong individual. Because we gotta fight this. We gotta fight it. I mean, Raven, and you know this, I'm talking to a fighter here. If we don't stand up at this moment, how yes. many more elections do we allow them to steal? They've been, they've been rigging elections for a long time. Come I think on. we know that. But if we don't stand up right now, and say, no, I will fight this until my last breath. Amen. I want reformed elections, fair elections. If this happened to my opponent, and, and the, they did this to my opponent, and it was Democrat voters who were disenfranchised, I wouldn't be okay with that. Now, I've exactly. got some, some bad news for you. We know the Democrats do what they do. They you know bring in the ballots and push the mail-in ballots when they're not even probably legitimate mail-in ballots. But the people running Maricopa County were Republicans. They were Rhino Republicans. This on. election was stolen by Rhino Republicans. The two men who ran our elections, guess what they were doing on the side? They ran a super PAC, raising tens of thousands of dollars to stop one candidate, me, while they're running the election and I'm at the top of the ballot. And I it's want so corrupt. to hit on that, Carrie. That is it. 
right there, patriots, is two things I want to say about that. As I say this, I used to say this on the campaign trail, and I say it all the time. It's not the Democrats that are most dangerous to her. They're a known quantity. Yeah. Okay. It is the ones who worship with us, claim to espouse our values, and claim to stand for our principles who are selling us out right. that are the most dangerous people we have. And let's just, while we're on that, who gets to run their own election? That is communism. How does she get to run her right. own election? The person who certifies election is running against you? Well, that's Are true. you kidding? So my opponent, communism. my opponent runs the state elections, and then the two guys running Maricopa County, which comprised of 64% of the population, so almost everybody lives in Maricopa County, they're the ones running a super PAC against me. I mean, conflict of interest, corruption that is so deep, the swamp is... You know, I know it's a desert, but we've got a swamp in Arizona. You do. And that's um, the swamp. The sewer that it drains into is the capital. That's right. And, you know, we have 15 counties in Arizona. And Maricopa County is a mega. Not, it's also a mega county, but it's a mega county. And so if they steal Maricopa County, the whole state right. is stolen. And that's what we're And seeing. I'm fighting this for every Arizonan in every county because I'm telling you, people come up to me. I can't walk 10 feet without someone saying... Thank you for fighting this. It's about time somebody fights this. Thank you for not giving up. And thank goodness we didn't. You know, we took this to the courts. We got a judge who ruled against us. We took it to the appellate court. They said no. They kept switching our judges in the appellate court. I thought that was interesting. I still don't know why. And then we get to the Supreme Court. They fall in love with you and they have to switch judge to somebody. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't think they fall in love. I think that <laughs> I have my suspicions, but I won't go into that right now. <laughs> so then it gets to the Supreme Court. And I think you probably heard last week. Yes. They're allowing us to now take a look at this signature verification. I think this is the smoking gun. <laughs> it is. And Come these mail-in ballots. I really do. This uh, is, that's great. And we, we had three whistleblowers. We have more whistleblowers coming out of the woodwork. If our judges won't stand up and do the right thing, right. the whistleblowers are coming forward. And that's you. That's that is, that, that is the moral of the story. You know, politicians, corrupt rhinos, sell out. If you're not going to do your job, we the people will do it for you. Yes. We're not. What is it they're saying that we're no longer, you know, trying to accept the things we cannot change. We're changing the things we can't accept. And that starts with yes. you fighting because you are. And this is what I want our patriots and ours listener at home. They ask me all the time. I always say verbs in the sentences. Don't tell me what's wrong. Tell me what you're going to do about it. Okay. And Carrie, like you're still fighting. So for the ones who are one, well, where does this stand? What's happening? What are we doing? What can what we, we do? Doing? Okay. Well, here's what we can do. And it's so simple. It's so simple. We have something called the First Amendment, and we're afraid to use it right now. We, I'm a loudmouth. I mean, we're loudmouths. We're speaking. We're, I've, you know, I've lost my, I don't want to say lost my reputation. I've been canceled. I've been called names, and I just don't care. Call me whatever you want. Amen. Call me an election denier. What I'm for is reforming our elections so that every person's vote counts. Yes. Legal vote. I want the legal votes. I yes. think we're all there. And so we need to, it's real simple, start talking about our elections. The one thing you can't talk about in this country is elections. When you see corruption, they, they, they call you names. They try to make yes. it just taboo right now. And we need to speak up and talk about it. And they don't want us talking about our elections. They really don't want, that tells me that there's so much corruption there. They're afraid that if we do reform our elections, our politics will never look the same. We will get citizens in there who want to bring common sense policies like secure the border, restore law and order, teach our kids uh, trade skill, vocational training so they can get out of high school and actually be prepared for the real world. You know, these are things that moms want and dads want. Yes. Yeah. And we keep going, why do we get these losers in DC? It's because our elections are, are rigged and stolen. We're not voting for, they're not even in, I, I even believe in San Francisco, as messed up as that place is. Yes. I don't believe they're voting for Nancy Pelosi. I Their elections know. are no. are rigged and horrible in California. And they want to bring that type of election to every single state, including Texas. Well, they're, they're not on my watch. Someone just said they are bringing them here. <laughs> well, they are, but we have to be bigger than the chief. So we, we got to speak it, We got to speak it, speak out about it and say, no, we want to talk about elections. We want to talk about election reform. We need to call our lawmakers, call them all, become their, you know, pen pal, write them, say uh, the number one issue in our country. I believe, you know, on the border was my issue. 
And I have the most bold, aggressive approach to securing that border. And we don't need Joe Biden to do it. Each state, each governor can secure the border Amen. in their state. Amen. If they've got the backbone spine to do it. Thank you. I almost said it. I almost said it again. Correct. Um, it, you know, it's called the Constitution, Article 1, Section 10. You've got the right to, to protect your citizens. From an invasion. Yes. Amen. But we can't ever get to that point if we don't have secure elections. That that's right. Real. And so that's why we have to push it. I believe it's the issue of our time. I really do. And once we get honest elections, then we will see all of the problems being solved with common sense solutions. It is. And I want to roll this quick. Uh, the, the common sense, something you said in here. Ziggy, can we roll? So it's going to take a lot. It's not going to be easy. They're going to slander us. They're going to write nasty articles about us. They're going to, uh, you know, attack us on social media. I frankly gotten to the point when it comes to my inner circle of friends, if you haven't been attacked, had uh, nasty articles written about you, if you haven't lost business, been canceled, uh, been had the left go after you in the most crazy way, then I don't even really want you to be my close friend. I just want strong people, right? That means this whole room could be my friend because we've all been there. So it's going to take everything we've got, but we do have to get together and do this because when we do come together and say we're not going to stop fighting, we are truly unstoppable. It's true. Whoa, well, if that's the criteria, then we're besties. How about getting right. hit by a car? <laughs> Woo! Uh, that's how bad politics is. I don't, yes. I don't talk about this very often. I did on the campaign trail. You know, our tires were slashed. We had dr um, screws drilled into our tires. Well, Tell we, it. It got to the point where we had to have someone watch our car while we would go in and do a campaign event. And I joked at the end when Hillary Clinton started seeing you know, Obama came and, and was uh, bad talk, bad mouth in me and Eric Holder. Well, that's an honor. Um, yeah, Obama it was an was honor. Bad, oh, I'm gross. living rent free in their mind. And Amen. then when Hillary Clinton started talking about me, that's when I got nervous. I'm going to be honest. Oh, yeah. I said, okay, I don't know the anything. on our car work. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm in good health. You know, my heart works. There's, you know, if anything happens to me, I... I didn't do it. <laughs> I did, yeah. Exactly. That's right. You guys heard it. She didn't kill herself. <laughs> and Jeffrey Epstein didn't hang himself. Exactly. It's that same thing he has in common with my Christmas decorations. Neither hung themselves. Yes. <laughs> so it's dangerous. We're in a dangerous time right now, and it's going to take all of us to step up. But I know that when my life does come to an end, and I hope it's when I'm much older, um, that I will, I will know that I fought as hard as I could for our country. And I think we're all in that right now. We're willing to stand up because we, I'm not willing to look into my children's eyes and say, Amen. Hey, I had a good life. I enjoyed America for what it was and good luck with communism. I'm just not willing to yeah. do that. That's right. Neither are and, the and, rest of our patriots. And we're, no way. and we're making some, we're getting some victories. Yes. They're not as big as we want, but I, I will tell you this, all of the polling showed we were going to win in a landslide. Everyone in America knows that we really won and that the woman sitting in our governor's office is a fraud. Even she knows it. Yes. Even she knows it. We're, we're making victories. And had we just won this election outright in a landslide and it went, everything went our way, we would not have woken up the millions of people who've woken up Amen. since election day. Now we know how they cheated, who they are, what the crimes were. And we are going to expose each and every one of these rats. Each and every one. Yes, yes. And I would. That's the essence of it. Because the spoiler alert, God wins. He didn't say all things were going to be easy. He said all things were possible. That's so true. that's well, what we. And we pray for. I mean, what I think our movement was about and why you're all here is we want to root out corruption, get our country back, get our liberties back. Right. That's what we pray for. Did, did are we getting that? I think we are. We, you know, then we find and we go, but God, you didn't give us that decisive victory on election day like we hoped. Well, God said, well, wait, is that what you want? You want a judge to rule in your favor, or do you want to root out corruption and get your liberties back? That's God's right. following that process in order to get in his us time, in order to expose everything that needs to be exposed. And unfortunately, it's not moving as fast as we want, especially us moms who are like used to getting stuff done. Come on, we got to get stuff done. Yes. This is part of getting to where we're rooting out corruption. You yes. got to find it first. You got to see it with your own eyes and you have to fight it.
and that's where we are. And I'm loving that we're doing that. We have the best fighter in you to do that. I, I tell people what comes on my heart is, you know, God didn't move the Red Sea. He parted it so that we could pass through. Yep. And that's how the, the mountain, you and, know. And that same God is with us today. Yeah. Sometimes Amen. we forget that, right? We're praying to God and we're thinking it's a modern day God. It's a, it's a God of all time. And he's going, I got this. I told you, be of good cheer for I have won the victory. Relax, people. We got this. Yep. So we're doing it. But Carrie, it's been an amazing. We're going to turn it over to a, a different segment. But before we wanted to, to give you a, a token. So you are in oh Texas right now. So we are officially making you a Ooh, yellow rose. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, thank you so much. So beautiful. So we have to Texanize you. I feel like it. I won a pageant or something. You did. Okay. Uh, can we all agree Amazing. that she's won the pageant? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Thank you. That's beautiful. I'm going to set this here. So we are going to, uh, so we are, we wanted to give you this as a, a token. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and wrap up with the one and only Carrie Lake right after this. The misinformation poses a threat to our nation's health. Climate change is an emergency. Democratic socialism. Codified. Everyone's right to choose. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15. Welcome back, Patriots. I hope you have enjoyed having a little time with the one and only Carrie Lake. It's been amazing to get an insight of what it is. We're all cheering for you, but it's amazing to be able to, to talk to you and see how the fight. So Patriots, this is why we do it. This is why we don't give up. She's right. not giving up. We're not giving up. So we wanted to give you a token. So under the, the seats, you each have a number. So if you mind looking under your number, and then we are going to pull. Miss Lake has pulled a number. Got it right here. Okay, so let's drum roll. And okay. what's the number that has been pulled? 13. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we let's are going to. to so, uh, Shay, could you bring? We're going to bring out. This is the gift. We're going to have one uh, sent oh, to you. Oh, this is hilarious. <laughs> And I want you to show what we get. We're giving away what the, the winner gets. Oh my goodness. That's funny. That's funny. Uh, yeah, I ho hopefully someday. Yes. We're, We're going to. the future here. That's hilarious. Very funny. She's still rethinking that simple podcast thing, guys. Here we go. But so That's that great. is our, um, so that is our segment. We're going to open it up real quick. I think we have a word from our sponsor. Yeah. Hello. Hello. So Patriot Mobile, we are so excited to be here today. You know, um, for those of you that don't know, Patriot Mobile, we are the only Judeo-Christian conservative wireless cell phone company. But we're not just a wireless cell phone company. We have great service on all three network towers. Yeah. Check us out. Um, we're about a mission and we are fighting for our God, our constitutional God-given rights to freedom. And that's what we, that's what keeps all of us at Patriot Mobile fighting every day. And we appreciate what you're doing, Raven. We're so excited to be partnered with you now. And by the way, for those of you, we have over here some gifts. And this, you can support Raven by just going to patriotmobile.com forward slash Raven using the promo code and sign up for Patriot Mobile. But again, we are so excited to be a part of this. Thank that's you so great. much. Thank you. Love Patriot Mobile. Uh, Patriot 
it always, always, always vote with your wallet. Amen. Okay. And support. Stop the supporting companies that are anti-American. Exactly. And against us and against our kids. And so I, what I want to tell you guys is if you can't be on the front lines, support those of us who are. So just one quick comment from um, our best dressed. Oh my goodness. Great. Um, Carrie Lake. Yes. Thank you so much for standing up and fighting. I pray that a lot of conservatives will actually take what um, you have done everywhere. My problem is, though, we have a lot of Republicans that are not willing to fight. But that's not you. And thank you for that. Thank you. We do have this Thank you so much. Sadly, um, you know, we've, we've seen people who give in every time every yes. time there's a, a battle that needs to be fought they cave they cave oh let's let's come to the middle some things we can't come to the middle on right you know sometimes you can come to the middle but a lot of these big issues you can't like communism. we're not willing to come to the middle when it comes to some of this transgender stuff being pushed no. to school where's the middle on that there is where's no the middle? middle where's the middle on um on the border with it wide open with fentanyl's pouring across there's no coming to the middle on some of this stuff and, you know, one of the, the things they've been lying about with our campaign was that, oh, she didn't um, bring the establishment and she didn't bring the independence and we won the independence. And you know what? I did work and brought a lot of the establishment and they did yes. come over. Unfortunately, there were two or, two or three uh, Republicans who didn't come my way and they're the ones running the elections. Yes. And they never came our way because they wanted to rig the elections to stop me because I am we the people. I represent we the people and, and we are so dangerous to them. And that's why um, I, my, the one thing I want to say, you said, give me some verbs. What are some of the action verbs we can do? We have to stay in the game. People say to me, why would I vote again? We have to vote again, even in the rig system. That's what they want. You know, in the last 10 years, people have started getting involved in politics. People who never got involved, got involved in politics. Yes. And they keep stealing our elections, hoping we'll toss our hands in the air and say, I give up. I'm not doing this anymore. No. Then they win. We have to keep voting. We have to vote in droves. We have to show up and vote, even in the rigged system. Be bigger than the cheat. We were so big that look how blatant and brazen they had to cheat. They had to do it right in front of our eyes where, where we knew it. It's like the machines don't work. The ballots are printed wrong. The lines are five hours long. People are walking away. They had to cheat so big that now we know who cheated, how they cheated, and where the crime was. Yes. And now we're going after that crime. And I'm not gonna stop until, as I said, every one of these people is uh, held accountable. And I wanna see, frankly, some people behind bars. Yeah. Perp walk. Yeah. We wanna see the perp walk. And yeah. to, to close on that thought, Patriots, just remember, like my parents bled for it, people died for your right you know, to vote. Don't let them take that. You only get to vote into communism once, and we don't compromise with communists. We're mama bears. And this we are next election is going everything. to be everything. It really is. It is everything. So get out there. Republicans who don't vote elect Democrats. So everybody get out there. Vote. Be bigger than the cheat. Stand for your children and your company call, and for Carrie yeah. Lake. And call out these uniparty swamp creatures. Don't let yes. them right. don't let them have the R behind their name if they're gonna end up Come on. stabbing us in the back and in the front. We need some true pro American, uh, America first people running, and that's who I'm. That's who I'm supporting. Well, I'm telling you because I'm not only America first; I'm a first American. Did you guys get that? It's a Native American <laughs> reference. It's awesome. But Carrie, thank you for being here. Thank you for rallying the patriots. Thank you for being the frontline fighter that these biblical times warned us we were going to be coming right. to. And thank you to our, our our audience for being here. Thank you. Thank guys. you. Thank you. So thank you for joining us for this Raven's Radar. If you want to hear more, we're going to have this on our social media. We're going to have more. Follow The Carrie Lake. It is The Carrie Lake. On Carrie... Facebook, it's The Carrie Lake. Everywhere else, it's just Carrie Lake. K-A-R-I-L-A-K-E. Carrie Lake. And, and you go we'll to CarrieLake.com as well. And we'll have information on our website, RavenHarrison.com. And you can find me on social media, Raven, the conservative warrior. We're going to be keeping up with Carrie. We're going to be moving forward with some new great things and hopefully she'll come back and see us again. I would love to. I would love to. Thank you so much, Texas. You guys are great. Yeah. We'll see you next time, Patriots on Raven's Radar.